Well, so first things first, hello everybody, Mr. Kilroy, if you have uh, patented that, well, I'm building a RV-14, so you know I'm already broke, please don't sue me. Uh, this is going to be kind of a different video here, normally it was just a time lapse, but I decided to try this fun little voiceover thing here. Anyways, um, so in the elevators, you start off uh, essentially just splitting the ribs in part to then deburr, like everybody talks about, and uh, and eventually, uh, I think they're pop riveted back together, if I remember correctly. It's been so long. I've since moved houses, which took a good solid three four months of time out of building to actually get everything moved over you'll eventually see the garages change uh, at some point in time so yeah anyways and then there's a disaster that happened between then and there that I'll explain once we get to that point um, for me personally I really love this uh, um, wheel. I think it's the 3M wheel. If anybody really cares, I'll link it on request. But uh, I also took some flack from the last video that I posted saying, well, if you press too hard, you'll go too far into the metal on one and not far enough on the other. Have essentially a thinner rib than a thicker rib. I don't, I mean, I think if you're not able to see those tolerances, it's definitely not a good idea for you to be using it. But uh, I can I can definitely tell the difference in tolerances. And then I also bought uh, one of the wheels that attaches to the drill. And uh, I seem to like that for the tighter spaces, of course, still using files and everything else for the elevators. You can see the ribs all clicked up there right in front of the manual. And then of course the uh outboard arms. I'm sure there's a technical name that I have no idea what it's for, but uh so build those together. The trim flaps are sitting way off at the left end there. And then of course I'm doing the regular remove bluing with the soldering iron trick that in the end is futile but I like the look of it. I won't end up having a polished aircraft but I still like the protection of it rather than to accident accidentally have some really deep cut in the aluminum that then I can't get out. Uh, on top of the manual now is the um, trim tab servo motor 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 bracket if i can indeed say those words correctly um and then you have the the spar for one of the elevators i walked off god knows where probably chatting with a neighbor but um yeah that trim tab motor is uh it's very easy to get that rib that sits on the side there backwards on that sucker i had to check a good couple of times then of course a whole lot of deburring you can see i put one of those wheels on the drill press and i use the uh scotch bright wheel to essentially uh deburr the inner holes on the spar there I love that trick. It saves me all kinds of time. Most of this stuff is just the regular old boring deburring stuff that most people skip over. I probably should too eventually. And the elevators are semi-quick, but once it gets to wings or fuselage, I'm going to have to chunk these videos up a little bit more. And just like everybody else, for the most part, my sole purpose here is just to 
prove to the FAA that I indeed built it and get the repairman's certificate. And unfortunately, there's no way to go back and tell my past self that this elevator skin that I'm currently working on is about to get damaged in the move. And all of this time I'm about to sink into it is for absolutely nothing. Turns out the place that I thought was safe in the new house was not at all safe and they came flying off a shelf. And then here's the, um, what is this going to be? The left elevator with the closeout tab that sits right next to the trim tab. It looks daunting in the manual, but in all actuality, if you clamp the boards where they tell you to, which is slightly in board of the curve, it uh, it's pretty much a non-event. This is for the most part, oh, right there, I'm doing the step drill for the wiring harness that's going to come out of the trim tab motor onto the horn. And of course, like everybody else has done a million times, it's clico everything up, drill everything, and then take all the clicos out deeper. For the most part, I publish these videos just so that um, I know for me personally, there's I go back and forth between four or five RV14 builds just because it's it's nice to see different camera angles, especially when I get stuck on something. You'll see every now and then I'll pull out an iPad and I'm just looking for a different camera angle to figure out how did they get in there and buck that rivet or how do they get in there and drill that how do they deeper this so most of my goal here is just to publish something that somebody else could possibly use the inverse trailing edge was really interesting I've seen three or four RV14s and uh, so I knew that the trailing edge was inverted, essentially. But, um, and then roughly at some point in time near here, I decided to just go to Cleveland Tool and get the rivet squeezer for the trailing edge. Um, that seemed to save a lot of time once I got to that step. Uh, once again, everybody's seen this a million times, DRDD2 and dimpling. This is, uh, well, I guess we're jumping back and forth, but uh, it was trailing edge. And that's a real pain to make sure that you're 90 degrees to the trailing edge. I found it easiest to just drill a hole in my workbench and then uh, drill a hole that was essentially 90 degrees to the trailing edge so that the pilot would then just follow that hole in the workbench, which was I mean, I'm going to throw a number out there, but probably 81 degrees to the workbench. Uh, so you can see that the drill there, that's the tool that I caught flack for saying, oh, well, you might put too much pressure on the edges with that tool. I, I don't get that feeling. Oh, and you can tell we're in a new garage now, so... This is elevator skin number two. Two out of the four came flying off a shelf. And so the bottom right elevator had to be, elevator skin had to be redone. Top left elevator skin had to be redone. It was hundred some odd dollars and waiting for it to get shipped from vans.
it's already over with, but uh, in case you missed it there, that was using tank sealant to seal up the foam, ri foam ribs into the trailing edge. Ah, there's a lovely shot of the carcass that is an unusable elevator skin and elevator skin number two. It's tough to tell that those are mangled up, but they're they're done for. Oh, and then, what is that? Rudder and horizontal stabilizer bar. Also on the wall of shame and the money pit that is trying to build an airplane that won't kill you once you go to fly it. And right there I was using the iPad to look at somebody's video trying to figure out how they got the it's the um the skins there on the outboard edge it was tough to see how they fit and would overlap and there's a lot of compression from the nose all the way to the uh, spar there I was looking at uh, somebody else's build log and they were saying the same thing it's just a lot I mean that skin is really really tight tightly wrapped around the rib there and then the bar there right by the grinding wheel that's the special RV14 bar I think it's aircraft tool supply that sells that if I remember correctly and that was absolutely worth its money to to fabricate your own bar to the right angles and all of that stuff I don't know I don't remember how much aircraft tool supply was asking for that but to not have to build those angles from stock steel was well worth the time versus money in my opinion Back riveting here, probably one of my favorite forms of riveting just because it's so freaking easy. Back rivet the other side here. And then eventually once everything's back riveted, stick the two together. I don't care how much deburring you do when you stick your hands between the two skins to put pop rivets in. You're going to end up cutting half of your arm. I double and triple checked these skins because the rudder ended up with some oil canning due to the fact that one of the ribs did not overlap the other rib in the proper location. It's a lot of fun to figure out how to drill out that pop rivet and get the rib in the right location. I was not about to do that with the elevators here. That little short tidbit there, and you can see it on the elevator, was uh, fabricating a wedge where I could then wedge the uh, pop rivet to the gun so that the gun would line up straight. And this, as I say, I like seeing other people's camera angles and then I have like the worst camera angle here. You can't tell but that's what I'm doing is sticking my hands in there and pop riveting. At least you can see that on the final spar there. Somehow we completely missed the elevator horns getting riveted.
the piano hinge for the um, for the trim tab was it wasn't all that hard it's just uh, you got to be really really careful that that pneumatic press is going to come down cleanly on the rivet and it's not going to catch any tube part of that piano hinge I think that's probably one of the easiest mistakes to make when it comes to the edges there and working with piano hinges. Two or three times it was slowly press down on the pneumatic press and then realize nope that's gonna clip one of those small little tubes and then have to go back and re-angle it. And I did get some help from Vans here. There's uh, when you're starting to close out the skins. There's a couple of places where, if you're not careful, and you don't go, if you don't look at what all it is that's left to rivet, there's a place where you leave leave out, and you can see the dotted lines on the bottom right of that skin. Well, until I flipped it over there, they are again. If you're not careful, you're going to miss those, and then you're going to have to pop rivet those. I can't exactly remember why I had called Vans. I think it was to talk to them about the elevator skins. And uh, somebody at that point in time said, watch those six rivets, because as soon as you start to close out those skins, you need to figure out a time to get back to those six rivets. It's not specifically stated in the plans to go back to them. And then people will have the skins completely riveted up and not be able to get a hand in there to finish those six. I wish I had done a video on bending the leading edge. That is at this point in time, one of the things that I hate the most. I enjoy every aspect of the build, except pretty much for that. And, I mean, I did the PVC tube, different diameters, all that stuff. And I've already done that for the rudder, so I kind of have an idea. Man, it just doesn't seem... I mean, I'll work with it for five, six hours just seems like it's always going to have some amount of tension on it and Van says that there shouldn't be any tension between the two skins they shouldn't be trying to pull each other apart they should line up freely anyways long story short hours and hours of working with that until it finally was essentially that way and then uh then I put it on the horizontal stabilizer just to make sure it didn't bind. So at this point in time, I've stuck the foam ribs in the elevator there where there's a block and the oil sitting on top waiting for everything to essentially dry. And off in the distance, I'm putting foam ribs into the other side. Foam ribs are dry on both sides. It's time to squeeze the trailing edge. Somehow, I remember this one now, somehow I had made a mistake and put a, I think it was a dash four rivet in when I needed a dash four and a half or dash five, I can't quite remember. But somehow I looked at the very edge which you grind down of the trailing edge. It's labeled dash four, dash four, point five, I don't remember, but I saw that and thought I needed a dash four in all of them. And then when I was not getting the correct amount of quote unquote acorn on the other side of the hole. Went back, reread it, figured out, nope, that's just for the last two holes. I really need a dash five. Had to drill out two 
two or three rivets in the leading edge there. And right here at the end, you're going to see um, some damage that was done to an elevator. Kind of dropped it. It slid out of my hand, maybe a foot, two feet above the ground. There'll be photos. Uh, I emailed Vans back and forth. They said pretty much bend it the back the best way you can. Maybe one sixteenth of filler is going to be needed to kind of smooth it out. Probably like one thirty two in all actuality. And they said it's a non-event. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, I'm just going to let this trail out to those photos. There they are. God, that hurts. But it'll be easily fixable with filler. Anyways, uh, somebody learns for this from this or enjoys it, more power to them. Uh, these, this was long, and it was drawn out. I'm going to try and start chunking it down to much thinner. Anyways... Take care. See everybody on the next video.